Hello and thanks for watching. This video is just going to be going over the main BP under interactable that is shared between all of the vehicle assets and the vehicles that are going to be coming soon. So what this asset does basically is probably quickest just to show you. So if we go in the character controller, we can open all of these vehicles up. Uh, there is animations, sounds, uh, you know, nice little particle effects essentially game ready and the cool thing about it is it's uh, completely procedural and modular so I just released update 1.1 and what that has done is completely reworked how these vehicles generate so instead of being on the construction script they are now done through a call-in editor event so before when they were on construction every time you updated the transform or every time you reloaded the level the vehicles would update to a new variation which is kind of handy in some situations, but it causes more problems than it prevents. So, you know, if you had a nice variation, a nice looking map, you'd reload it later and the vehicles would be completely different. And if you had cinematic cameras or other things set up, that's going to completely screw up whatever you're trying to do. So instead of this, you know, updating at its own free will, we now have buttons to do it. So we can randomize just the selected vehicle and the cool thing here is if you get a variation that you like you can duplicate it and reuse that vehicle without having to worry about it resetting or changing to something else which is uh, super handy so what we also have is a randomize all vehicles button as well so there's no need to go through and manually select everything if you want to just rapidly prototype a level uh, you still have that same functionality of being able to quickly randomize things uh, and not only that, uh, we can now optimize these vehicles as well. So we can optimize the selected vehicle or optimize all. So this is just just for the sake of doing it in the editor. If you have a really heavy scene or you have a lot of vehicles and uh, it's a little bit heavy on the editor, this will fix that right up. Now, the reason I say for the editor is because in play mode, there is a custom HLOD system. Um, so because there's so many different moving parts and so many different ways that this can uh, spawn, I wasn't able to go with the traditional HLOD, so I had to build something custom that checks the player position. So what we can do here is if we set the uh, the player distance proxy to something like a thousand, and we hit play, as you can see, the uh, the editor optimizations completely gone. We only see that in the editor, but in play mode, when we're a thousand units away, the vehicle that we just changed to a thousand units is going to switch. It's only got a five second timer on it. Um, it's going to switch to being a proxy mesh. So when you're really, really far away, by default, in play mode, it's, it's already optimized. So that's why we have this extra optimization for the editor, because that proxy mesh uh, swapping out, there's no way for the editor to reasonably detect that, uh, the way that these vehicles are set up with the functionality. So we've got a button to do it instead. But again, you hit play, the vehicles all reset back to where they are. So to give you a better example of why this is useful, let's go and have a look at the procedural foliage map. Now, this isn't what your procedural foliage map is going to look like. I've done some changes here to uh, drastically spawn the amount of vehicles, uh, increase the amount of vehicles that are spawned. So instead of having about 150, uh, I think we've got between 500 and 1,000, maybe more. Um, and I'm going to show you the difference that this editor optimization makes. and you know, how it's already optimized in the play mode. So we'll just wait for this to load and I'll be back. Okay, so this is my procedural map. Uh, I said 500 to 1000. We actually have 1590 vehicles spawned in this map. As you can see, the frame rate's not too good. Part of the reason the frame rate's not so good is because all of these collision boxes are being rendered. So if we hit G and go to game mode, it doubles our frame rate, but still 10 is horrible. So this isn't good, but if we click play, we will see that it's actually going to run perfectly fine. And the reason for this is because by default, I have the proxy mesh generation set up. So any of the vehicles that are over 10,000 units away are being swapped out with the proxy mesh. So in play mode, this is still 1,600 vehicles. Uh, as, we, as we fly through all of the vehicles, they're all going to swap from their proxy meshes into their high detailed meshes. And even in really dense areas, uh, we're still getting well over 100 FPS while I'm recording. So 
why isn't this happening in the editor? So the reason this isn't happening in the editor is because, like I explained before, the HLOD system that I am using is a custom variant. Um, so by default, it's not going to work uh, the way that you want it to in the editor. In play mode, it's perfectly fine, but in the editor, um, it doesn't actually swap out the proxy mesh. So these vehicles at a distance are quite heavy on the draw calls. There's a lot of a lot of different moving parts, so how do we quickly fix this? Well, you only need to select one of these, and these are painted with foliage, mind you. Um, you can do this with any vehicle, no matter what, what it is. Click Optimize All Vehicles in the editor. Now, it's going to take a second because it has to detect 1600 classes and then also assign this to 1600 classes. But once it's done, we are going to get frame rate just as good, uh, well, better than what it was in uh, play mode even. So if you've got a massive, massive map, you know, 8 kilometers by 8 kilometers, you can have thousands of vehicles on that map, and it's not going to be a problem. All of these vehicles are still interactable, they still play their sound effects, they still have particles, there is no sacrifice to using them this way, it is just an editor optimization. So we've given that a second, and now all of the vehicles are just going to load as these proxy meshes, but again, if we hit play, as soon as we hit play, it's uh, it's going to forget that and it's going to go back to rendering how it should be for the user. So this is, again, just for the editor. So look at that. All of the vehicles are now showing up exactly as we wanted them to. Now, one thing you might be noticing, though, is all of these vehicles, they look kind of similar. Now, the reason for that is because when we changed it from being a construction-based script to uh, a call and event one, when these vehicles spawn, we actually need to tell them to randomize just once. So if we tell randomize all, give it a minute to go through, boom, it's already done. Now, we need to readjust the uh, the optimizations as well. So just click optimize all once again, just to make sure you, it gets rid of any extra meshes that might have spawned. And we are back to 120 FPS. And now if we hit play, all of the vehicles are going to be different. And that's going to be based on the spawn settings that we set with the vari variables earlier. So as you can see, and these these are the vehicles spawning with the really heavy moss, uh, with the really heavy moss as well. So despite the fact that these are all hero quality vehicles, we can have literally thousands of them until the skyline is peppered, and uh, you know be hitting well over 100 FPS with no problem. And again, they're all still interactable. So that basically goes over the new uh, optimizations and everything that I added. If we go back to this interactable demo here, I can quickly show you another other few things as well. So spawn settings. This is where everything um, you want to customize to change how the randomization works um, is stored. So we have all of the options for the doors. And every single one of these has, th um, has a tooltip um, for all sections. So we've got all the randomization properties and there's typically override properties as well if you want to manually disable something or change the way something spawns. You can disable the foliage, you can dis disable the randomization and select what foliage you want to spawn. Uh, flat tires, no tires, half tires, uh, the different moss and proxy variations, what sort of materials you want it to spawn, uh, if you want it to be age, mossy or both, the, uh, the chance that that will happen. Again, we've got more options for the boot and the hood, uh, for the moss, and also for the proxy and the mesh reset timers and distance checks. So yeah, um, once you change any of those values, all you need to do is click randomize and it will randomize using whatever rules you have set out in here. So if you want more of a breakdown on these, feel free to check out the PDF documentation. But again, they're pretty self-explanatory. Just play around with them. Try to find something that you like. And remember just to use these vehicles here. And if it's getting heavy in your scene, just use the optimize button. And when you press play, you know, no worries. So it really, really is flexible and gives you a lot of wiggle room when you're trying to prototype your games. Um, you know, even to the extremes. When you're not sure what's going to be possible, you want to be able to spawn a thousand vehicles and you know, get the, get everything else in there without the vehicle slowing down the editor. Um, this is what that's going to help with. So yeah, I hope you guys appreciate the update and I hope this gives you a good idea of what the interactable blueprint is capable of, just how optimized it is. And yeah, that should give you some ideas and inspiration for how to use it in your game. Thanks very much for watching and thanks for the support as always. I appreciate it.
bye